Okay, it is officially bear season here in Wisconsin, and unfortunately this year I do not have a bear tag. I had an absolute blast bear hunting for my first time last year. I waited 12 years for a tag, um, and I had a successful hunt. If you guys want to check that video out, I'm going to link it below. Um, it was a great time, great experience. I'd definitely check it out if you haven't yet. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cook up one of the roasts that I have saved from this bear from last year. Um, bear meat is absolutely delicious. I really enjoy eating it. Some people, for some reason, um, say that it's greasy. Uh, I really don't get it. I think it, it's an absolutely delicious meat. And I've heard Joe Rogan say that um, it tastes kind of like if a deer and a pig were somehow mixed, or a, a cow and a pig were somehow mixed. And I think that's actually probably a perfect description of this meat. So this is a roast here. And I've done this recipe before for you guys, a very similar recipe with a venison roast, and you guys loved it, so I'm going to do it again with bear. Um, I've done this before with bear, and I know it works really well. So this is just your typical um, crock pot roast with some vegetables. Uh, a lot of people do it this way, but I'm just going to show you how I like to do it. And one thing before I get into cooking this, really this all starts with the breaking down of the animal. When you do get an animal, um, when you do kill a deer or bear or whatever you're going to cook, it kind of depends on how you cut the animal up and break it down to package it. And what I like to do is I save my choice cuts of meat, like the back straps, tenderloins, the heart, um, and then with the big quarters uh, out of the shoulders and back legs, I like to save a couple roasts. I like to save the rust, rump roast, the ham, the ball roast, a couple shoulder roasts, maybe a neck roast, and then the rest I turn it, the scrap meat, into grind meat. So I use that for like ground venison for you know, tacos, lasagna, all sorts of different things. But I make sure to save a couple of roasts every year because they're just so good in the crock pot. Um, sometimes I keep them up and put them into different things, but I definitely like to make sure I have a couple of these big roasts from all of the animals I kill because um, they're really good and I like cooking them this way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I got this bear roast here and um, it's, I trimmed it pretty well when I uh, butchered the a animal, but there's a little bit of silver skin and just kind of fat and stuff left on it. So I got my de facto knife set here. You guys know if you've been following me, I love these knives. I use them from in the field, gutting, butchering um, the animals, and then I use them in the kitchen when I'm cooking everything. They make great knives. Um, they finally got this full set out. If you, they have everything you need to take, game from field to table. Um, so I got the boning knife right here. I'm going to also put a link to them in the description below. I definitely recommend checking them out if you haven't. But I'm just going to kind of trim up this piece of meat, get some of the extra silver skin that I left on there off just a little bit. And you don't have to get too carried away with this because in the crock pot, all of this stuff is going to just, when it's slow cooking, is just going to break down and uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be tough like it would be if you just threw this on the grill or something. Alright, that's looking a lot better. Again, you don't have to get too carried away. There is just a big layer of silver skin right here over the cap that I want to get rid of. And normally, I got Harley right here, my dog, eyeing things up. Normally, I give her the meat scraps. I am not going to do that today because bears can carry trichinosis. So something that you must do when you're cooking bear is it has to be cooked to an internal temp of at least 155, 160 degrees. More on the wall than on the side because that kills the parasite and it's totally safe to eat. But if you do eat bear meat, medium rare or rare, like I normally like to eat my steaks and stuff, um, you can risk getting trichinosis because they do carry it. So I'm definitely not going to feed Harley this raw meat like I would if I was cooking a deer or something like that. Alrighty, so. I got this trimmed up. The next thing we have to do is prepare vegetables. Um, I have just carrots, potatoes, onions, and celery. Um, I have got baby carrots. I normally like to get the bigger carrots and cut them up, but I have these in the fridge, so I'm just going to use those. And I'm just going to cube up the rest of these things. But before I do that, I'm going to actually I'm going to rub this guy down with just a little bit of I have grape seed oil today. I'm going to sear this in a cast iron skillet once I have my vegetables ready. I'm going to give that guy just a little bit of a coating, and then I'm going to cover this roast in salt and pepper. And you want to put a lot of this on because the salt and pepper is only covering, obviously, the outer layer of the meat. It's not actually getting inside of it, so I put quite a bit on. Alright, we got that all seasoned up. I'm going to put this off to the side for now. And then what I'm going to do while I'm cooking up or dicing up my vegetables, I got a cast iron skillet here. 
I'm going to get some grapeseed oil in this pan and get this uh, ripping hot because we're going to sear that piece of meat. Not to cook it, just to give it a nice crust around the outside before it goes in the crock pot. Alright, now it's time to go to work on these vegetables and I have one of DeFacto's new knives. I could not be more excited for this knife. This thing is a, they're calling it the boning um, fillet hybrid knife. Um, I don't know if they're going to keep the name for that, but this thing is absolutely perfect for outdoors, man. I mean, this could be a perfect gutting knife, butcher knife. Um, I've been asking for this for a long time, so I was stoked to see this come out. It's not necessarily, I mean, you can obviously use it in the kitchen. That's not what it's meant for, but I wanted to show it to you guys today. So that's what I'm going to use to cut this stuff up. And just like all their knives, it is razor sharp. Um, just super stoked about this knife. So I'm just gonna cube my potatoes up, you know, into pieces that are about an inch or so. All right, my pan is definitely hot. So I'm gonna get this in here, and this is gonna be loud and make a mess. And the goal of this is literally to burn the outside, give it a nice crust. Um, for texture and to kind of seal in that flavor while it's cooking in the crock pot. So I'm going to keep going on my veggies. Okay, so now we got our bear roast that has this nice crisp layer around it. We got it um, browned in that pan or crusted in that pan and um, that's looking good. So I'm going to get some of these onions in the bottom of this crock pot just to kind of keep that meat off the bottom and then I'm going to throw this bear roast right on top of there and then we're going to add the rest of our veggies, our potatoes, the rest of our onions, carrots, celery, get those in there kind of around the meat. Okay now I got some cream of mushroom you can use cream of just about anything. I prefer cream of mushroom. Finally, there we go. Get that in there. And then I have onion soup mix. Um, this is one of the most standard things to do. Works every time. If you've got different ways of doing it, you can certainly try your own recipes. This just always works for me. I think one package should do that. Okay, and then I've got beef broth. This is just beef broth, beef broth from the store. Um, and how much of this you put in there is dependent upon how much meat you have, how many veggies you have in there, and how much of a broth you like. I typically like a little bit more broth, so it almost turns into like a soup or a stew. I like to mix it up so I'm gonna put it so that it comes to about at least halfway up the piece of meat. And that's just about it. Um, I'm gonna plug this in on high, let it go for probably four hours, maybe up to six hours. That all depends on how big your piece of meat is, what kind of meat it is, um, how tough it is. So when this is ready to pull apart with the fork, you know you're good to go. So really super, super simple recipe. All it asks is a little bit of time of you. Um, the prep work and putting it all together only takes a few minutes. So I'm gonna get this going over here. Plug our crock pot in and set it to high. And I'm gonna let that go. So I'll make sure to get back with you when this is done and I give it the taste test, but this is just one of my favorite recipes that I do all the time. It's super simple, it just simply, it works every time. And um, you know, the weather's cooling down, fall is here, it's a great fall recipe and it's the perfect way to utilize some of those bigger cuts of meat that you get from your big game animals. All right, I think we might be there. Oh yeah, look at that, just falling apart. Once you can do that, you know it's done. I'm gonna shred this up, get myself a bowl. All right, it is all finished. It's been in the crock pot for about, uh, right around five hours, I'd say. 
Um, and as you could see, the meat was just falling right apart. Perfect. It's just completely tender. You can break it apart with your fingers. It smells delicious, so I'm going to go ahead and give a bite of just the meat a try. Very good. Very good. Very tender. Let's get some of these veggies to try. Perfect. As usual, this recipe is just a feel safe, can't go wrong, it works every single time. And like I said, it works with just about any big roast you have out of any type of animal. Um, this is, I think my first, no, I've done this once before with beer before, but um, it's very, very good. The veggies aren't like too soft and sloppy or anything like that. You know, they still got a little bit of a, you know, texture to them, but they're not crunchy. It's just perfect. I love the texture of this dish, I love the flavor. Yeah, really, really good. One of my all-time favorites. A lot of people do a recipe very similar to this. Again, this is just how I like to do it. If you have some other flavors you want to mess around with or throw in there, by all means, go ahead. But if you haven't tried this method of cooking, I definitely give it a shot. Lots of people just turn all of their, you know, big roast into grind or turn them into hot sticks or sausage or you know, send them into the processor to do things like that. And I think trying something like this might make you reconsider and saving some of those big roasts to save for the crock pot and slow cooking. Um, hot sticks and sausage and all that is delicious, of course, and I do some of that too. But I really like to process all my own meat, and this makes it super simple. So, um, yeah, guys, appreciate you watching this video. I hope you give this a chance. I think you'll definitely like it. I think your families will appreciate it this fall. So make sure you like and subscribe this video. Um, Follow along with my channel. Hunting season is here. I'm going to be doing all sorts of hunting. My freezer is getting pretty empty, so hunting season is here. It's time to restock the freezer with all sorts of game meat. Um, and I will be doing some more cooking videos. This is one of my favorite things to do is just, you know, take you guys through the whole process of going out, making the memories, having successful hunts, and then, you know, what do you do once you have had a successful hunt? What do you do with the meat? How do you prepare it? How do you eat it? There's no better thing in the world than cooking and eating something that uh, you've done yourself from the killing to the butchering to the processing and then the cooking and eating. So I take a lot of pride in this. I know most people who like to hunt and fish do as well. So definitely give it a try. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have more wild game recipes out there. Thank you for watching this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.